everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We got a five pack of stories for you today that I think you're going to be really excited about around Nintendo Switch, including a massive event happening next week that's going to contain brand new announcements for major exclusive Switch games. Oh boy, I cannot wait. Damn! But the first story that we need to get ourselves into deals with Quake. Have you heard of the Quake IP? I know I have. Well, the Quake 2 is apparently getting a remaster releasing next week on August 11th. Now, this comes from a known video game leaker called Billabil Kun, who has stated that the rumored Quake 2 remaster, which is presumably being announced at this month's QuakeCon, will release on the Nintendo Switch eShop and other platforms on Friday, August 11th. QuakeCon kicks off on August 10th, 2023, through the 13th of August, 2023, at Gaylord Texan Resort and Convention Center. Quake 2 Remaster was first leaked by the Rating and Administration Committee of Korea, so we already know it exists. And, and as a small update that's not included in this article, Bill Bill Khan did put out there that the game is going to be $10, just like the first one. So that is obviously really great. And I honestly, I'm a big fan of the old school Quake IP. I think it's really, really good. Now, before I get into this next story, I just want to throw out there that literally only about 50% of you guys watching this video are subscribed to the channel. At least that's what YouTube tells me. So what are you doing? Subscribe to the channel today and help us reach our goals. But you know what? I don't want to waste too much of your time because we have too many other stories to get to, including updated sales from Japan. And right now, well, here's the big thing. Pikmin 4 holds steady at this week at number one. So the latest Famitsu boxed software and hardware charts have come through for the week of July 24 through July 30th, 2023, and it remains the best selling. So let's just get right into the software sales again. This is in Japan, which doesn't include digital data for Nintendo. And it, Pikmin's at number one uh, with 115,697. What's really interesting about this is in its second week, this second week sales of 115,000, it would still be, if it was week one, the highest sales of a brand new Pikmin game ever in week one. And yet this is in week two. It's already moved half a million units in Japan, guys. That's crazy. Number two, we have a brand new release as well in Natsuman 20th Century Summer Vacation by Spike Chunsoft. It is at 18,267 in its debut. We have Tears of the Kingdom still holding steady there at number three, moving 14,749 units, now at 1.789 million. Very good chance that it crosses into 1.8 million next week. We have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at number four. We have an 11,440 units moved. We have Minecraft, the Nintendo Switch version from Microsoft, will be 7,597 at the five spot. At number six, we have Cry Machina by Furu. Moving 7,417 units. That's also a brand new release for Switch this week. We also see that Disney Illusion Island is chiming in at number seven. That's moved 7,172 units. Again, another new release on Switch this week. We see Nintendo Switch Sports still doing strong there at 5,782 units. And then we see Splatoon 3 chiming in at number nine at 5,609. And then we have Cry Machina Furu, the PS5 version coming in at number 10 at 5,228. Then we get to the hardware sales, and this is really fun. We see the Switch OLED model chiming in at 56,212 units for the week. That is obviously Nintendo's top model. The top model of PlayStation 5 moving 46,774. Then we see the base model of Switch moving 14,543. And then obviously we see Switch Lite at 7,571. If you do a little bit of math on that, that gives you roughly, yeah, I'm just looking at it here, 78,000 or so switches that moved. But PlayStation 5 is doing well because the digital version came in at 6,437, giving them about 53-ish thousand units sold. So that's really, really good. Xbox Series X chiming in at 1,653. PlayStation 4 still selling a few units there at 784 with Xbox Series S uh, right there at 193. And then we just have the 2DS rounding it out because there's still some units out there that haven't sold apparently. It's a good thing to remind you guys the 3DS slash 2DS isn't even being made anymore. These sales are obviously incredible and it's a very nice hold 
for Pikmin 4. I'm very curious to see what the drop-off will be in week three, and if it can kind of settle in at a 10 to 14,000 sales pace like Zelda has, that would be really, really good news for Pikmin 4. Uh, I, you know, we didn't get sales updates for it at Nintendo's briefing yesterday, but that's okay because you know what? This is not that quarter. Like the Pikmin 4 is actually in quarter two for Nintendo. But you know what is happening? Something very, very special that we need to talk about because guess what, guys? We have a brand new event happening next week. The new Pokemon Presents. So this was already rumored, right? We talked about this last week, or maybe it was earlier this week, that we were going to get a Pokemon Presents. Well, it has been officially announced. So we're on Nintendo Life because they provide some additional context. I want to make sure we put in here. Here's the tweet, though. Uh, they have the UK tweet up. Obviously, I looked at the US tweet myself. Uh, but it's time for Pokemon, uh, the next Pokemon Present trainers. Tune into our official YouTube channel at 2 p.m. BST. For those who don't know, it's 6 a.m. Pacific. So for me that's going to be 8 a.m central of course we're going to be live stream reacting to this even though pokemon tends to copyright claim every time i react to them it's whatever and you see in their little quick thing here that hey uh they got some so some purple going on people trying to guess what it is there's an m that popped up over here might be related to mewtwo or something you know who knows there uh but it says the next pokemon presents has been announced gives the time then it says what exactly the news will be we don't know for sure but given that pokemon and scarlet Violet DLC, the hidden treasure of Area Zero is still largely shrouded in mystery. We're pretty confident we'll be hearing more about that. The teal mask is the first part of the DLC due to release in fall of 2023. And we're currently in August, so we may well get a release date for that part. But the Indigo Disc is due out in winter of 2023. Highly likely we're going to see news about this. One thing I want to note is how long this is. This is a 35-minute show. And I went and looked at prior Pokemon Presents. Most of them are around 15 to 25 minutes we don't get a 35 minute one very long it leads me to believe that beyond the dlc and some other you know detective pikachu 2 news and stuff like that you know some people think we'll get movie news on that i don't i don't really know that that's going to be the case but i will say what if we get a surprise game announcement for 2024 i'm just saying I'm not, I, they might not do it here but this is a long show to not have some sort of big big surprise so we'll have to wait and see what the deal is what the goods are for pokemon presents but next up we need to get into hey why don't we get to talk a little bit about tears of the freaking kingdom why we talk about it? Well, because they released a new batch of icons, and they have several new icons coming. So, so Nintendo Switch Island members can now redeem their My Nintendo Platinum points to collect icons from the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. As you can see, we have these three icons available right now. We have Princess Zelda, Princess Zelda with Princess Zelda. This is the Breath of the Wild Zelda versus Tears of the Kingdom Zelda, or I don't know. However, they're trying to do these icons. Then we got Pura here, and these are available from right now until the 10th, and then from the 10th to the 17th, we obviously have these two here. And then from the 17th to the 24, we have Sidon and his wife. And then we have from 24 to 31, Riju and Ganondorf. And then obviously we're ending with uh, our our favorite Goron, I suppose, in uh, Tears of the Kingdom in Yunubu. So from 831 to 97. Interestingly enough, they haven't really released like any updated Link ones in quite some time. But hey, you know, it is what it is. I'm pretty excited for these new waves that we have coming. Tears of the Kingdom is a massively popular game, so it's not really a big surprise that we're getting this stuff. Now, look, we got to head into our last story. And this is a fun one because it comes from a fellow YouTuber who's very good at researching hiring posts and profiles on LinkedIn and all of that. And it comes from our dear friend, Doctray81. Now, Doctray81, you see here on his video here, says Vancouver Studio hiring for Nintendo Switch 2. And while he doesn't like tell us what the studio is because the hiring post doesn't tell us what the studio is. It is a studio that really prides themselves on visuals and their own internal engine. I tried doing some research into this. I have a few guesses at who the Vancouver studio is, but I want you guys to tell me. And throughout it, it's very clear they're hiring someone to make Nintendo games. It says that specifically in the post. But this is the the, the, the quote I wanted to bring up here. It says, if you are a rendering engineer, a passion for pushing boundaries of visual, of visual excellence. And again, this is 
in the hiring post. We encourage you to apply. This is a fantastic opportunity, part of a renowned gaming studio in Vancouver, offering a hybrid office setup where your contributions will shape the next generation of gaming experiences. And this quote's important because this post is indeed about Nintendo. Uh, we can go in here and see that this is all part of the same hiring post, that they are specifically hiring a rendering engineer for Nintendo games. And then they go into an explanation of duties in here as well, collaborating and all this stuff. But the point is that this part here is all part of the same job posting. So it's very likely that this is a hiring post for a rendering engineer specifically to handle Nintendo games heading over to Nintendo Switch 2. Now we already know, of course, that Nintendo Switch 2 dev kits are out in the wild. The floodgates have opened. And you know what? Now that studios have dev kits, naturally they're going to start making sure they have the staff on hand to handle bringing games to the platform so don't be surprised if over the next six months we see a ton of these specifically targeted hiring posts to hire people to work on versions of games for switch 2. it's just what's going to happen now that they have the tools and the hardware necessary to develop games for it they got to make sure they have the teams to do it and while some studios will just teach their internal teams you know how a lot of Western studios work. They hire people for specific projects. So, hey, it is cool to know that hey, some third-party support is coming Nintendo Switch 2's way already. Now, I want to thank all of you guys for being here. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate if you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and you know what, guys? I'll catch you in the next video.